Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. I've got the Thunderbird again, back on the Thunderbird. I'll be taking uh, the suspension off. The springs, the lower control arm, the upper control arm, the braking, dropping down the uh, tie rod ends, taking the drag link out, uh, right up to the pitman arm. So that's what my plan is. We'll see how far we get with this. If it gets too long, I'll cut it off at, uh, well, wherever I get. But the main, the main thing is to get the, the springs out. And I'll just do one side on the video so you won't have to see that over again. There's no point. But I'll bring you in close to show you what I'm doing. Also, I built some cribbing because I wanted to be able to move the uh, rancher or, or the Thunderbird around some. So that's what this video is about. Oh, and I want to mention that the, the shock towers, uh, caps, and the top of the shocks have been taken off already. I, but it's in the video. It'll be the first thing you see, actually. Um, but you'll notice that the, it was still red and purple and gold at that time. And I did it because I needed to get access to the paint below it. But anyway, that's what this video is about. This here. All right, I'm going to take you down off the tripod, and I'll show you this cribbing that I built. All right, here we are. So I, I had four wheel dollies, or car dollies. So I built some cribbing out of 2x4. Up there, they're 2x6. Uh, uh, but they're the same, same uh, height. And I just mounted them under the axle. So it gives me the ability to move the car around pretty easily. Well, it takes effort, but I mean, it's not that bad. Um, we'll go up front. So there's the front one, the two by six. I think I may get rid of those and just do them all two by four, but these are working fine. So before anybody gets all crazy about uh, cribbing and, you know, is it safe and that stuff, I just a little heads up. I've been in underground mining most of my life and uh, many, many jobs are done on this stuff drilling, uh, putting crushers in, you name it. A lot of work done on building cribs. So, yeah, not done right, it can be dangerous, but I have a lot of experience with building cribs, so I'm not at least a bit concerned about being underneath. And this is what we're doing. So first thing, after, like I said, I, I'll show you this first, because I already videoed that, taking those off. Next, we'll be uh, taking the shock off, taking the rotor and all that stuff. And look at these rotors. Well, they got their money's worth out of those. They run them right down thin. Anyway, they have to be replaced. So let's get you get up on tripod again and get at her. I'll just give you a quick show on how easy it is now to move this thing. The chair out of the way. So now, <clears throat> when I need to move this around with those cribs and the wheel dollies, I can just grab it and I can move it. Just like so. So now I have more, it makes more room in the shop. So, that's it. We'll get down low and we'll start working on this. Like I say, you'll see the first, you'll have, I've already videoed the first, the, the shock tower caps. Okay. All right, taking the shock tower cap off. Nine sixteenths. There's three uh, nuts on the shock tower cap and there's a, a nut on the shock itself so let's see what happens here these aren't usually well i shouldn't say usually I, this is the first second time i've done it on the green one i did it so but th this car has been like i said a few times already this car has been coming apart so easy it's uh it's not a big deal Keep a rag hand when I'm working handy when I'm working with bare hands, which I don't like doing very often. But some jobs I just don't like the gloves on. If it's a job that I feel I'm not going to get my fingers pinched on, I'll I'll go bare handed. And if it's not too greasy, not that I'm afraid to get dirty, it's just that I don't. Uh, eh. I don't like. You know the greasy and stuff all over me. The dirt's not a problem with me. I've been dirty most of my life. All right, there's the cap right there. Not much to it. Straightforward, side to side. 
Now the uh, this has a little pinch knot or not a pinch knot, but it's like one of those tin washers on there. I'm not sure what or not. I don't know why it's on there. It must be a reason. Who knows? I'll keep it. You never know. I'll bag and tag it with the rest of the stuff. So let's see if this will come off without. So these shocks were seized. <laughs> nope. I'm gonna have to put something on them. Probably gonna have to get a little bit of uh of my liquid on it. So we'll crack open the deep creep. Let's crack open the deep creep here a little bit. Give it a second. And uh, I'll find something to hold the top with and I'll get right back to you. Alright. Put some liquimatazzi on it. And I have uh, since I don't have I don't have a 916th in this uh, offset here, so a wrench, which I need to get a set of uh, SEA, SAE ones. Um, I do have a metric 14 will fit right on. They're, they're pretty much the same. So, and I have a pair of vice grips to hold it. I hope to move that cap. Hopefully these vice grips will hold it all right. Let's see what we can do here. There she comes. Now, oh, she'll probably come off now. Nope. Well, there she goes. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Stand aside, but there's no, I don't think there's any danger of that coming out. But you never know what can go on. These are old cars. Things aren't what they used to be. So there we go. That's off. Pull that cap off. The rubber. See the rubber on this one separated? They're supposed to be joined in there. It's supposed to be a part of this upper plate. Which I don't know why. There. That one's having the, that one must have got beaten around a bit. She's giving me some grief. Let me get my screwdriver and see if I can uh, or pry bar, see if I can force that a tiny bit. There she comes. A little bit of a uh, little bit of a uh, fear tactic on it. Yeah, so these are supposed to be part. They're supposed to be hooked together. There's little tabs. Anyway, be new ones going in anyway. And that's that for the for the upper. The rest is the rest is all below. Well, that's not true. The uh, spring compressor will go through the top. I just wanted to mention too, you'll notice this piece of uh, pipe insulation on here. I put it on because every time I walk by this this side, and actually the other side the same, but I didn't only have one, one piece of insulation. It was ripping my coveralls up. Every time I go by, it was catching. It's like going by a cactus. You can't get by. If you even come within an inch of them, they're going to run it and grab you. Anyway, that's why that pipe insulation's on there. Okay, uh, I put some... Uh, Deep creep on, but I'm going to give them a little heat too because I don't want to snap those off. They're 9 16 and they're on there pretty tight, so I'm going to give them a little bit of a heat and uh, hopefully that'll uh, do it. I'm just using the, the old map gas yellow tank and my uh, turbo torch. If I can get it lit. I give them heated up. Okay, those, uh, those uh, shock bolts are giving me a hard time and I don't really have enough room because I kind of went at it the wrong way. I'm going to pull the caliper off and the rotor 
and the backing plate get rid of all that I've turned the wheel outward so I can add these things this is a 13 16th I believe it is yeah 13 16th and I've had these off when I first got the car I've loosened up these calipers stick because they need to be rebuilt so I did loosen up these these are 9 16th just to give some uh, some room in here so I don't have to fiddle with uh, pushing them in so that just relaxes the the pad area you can see it's 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 loose there now so it'll be pretty off but I'm gonna pull these uh, 13 16 bolts out and then we'll we'll get the that caliper off you can see what I'm doing there hopefully And like I say, I've had these off before, so they aren't on there too terribly hard. And even when I got it, they weren't. And I got the brake line unhooked already and drained out. So that's done. All right, well, let me uh, put you on time lapse and we'll get this whole thing done. We'll get rid of all this, this stuff right in here. I'll pull it back a little bit too. There we go. So you can see what's going on. All right. Hang in there. there's a rotor off pretty simple like you saw me take off the spindle nut the, the cage spindle nut a cotter pin cage spindle nut I like to just keep them all together I put them back in underneath the cap with it and then there's the backing plate well of course you saw me take the rotor off, or the brake rotor off or brake caliper off rather brake rotor with this that and then these are just half inch three half inch for the backing plate and then uh, three quarter inch for the uh, castle nut on the outer tie rod end and whacked it a few times with a hammer and she came down and that's pretty much it for that I'll continue on now I have lots more room to work to get those uh, shock uh, shock nuts off I, I got one off the other ones were giving me a hard time all right I'll continue on with that I'm not gonna video it you've already seen me do that it's quite painful to watch but, uh, yeah, so then I'm going to try to get this off, too, the stabilizer link, because all this has to come off. But what I'm trying to do is get it down to where I can get the spring off first before I remove any of the arms here. Well, definitely not going to get the spring off with this arm in place without compressing the spring. Lower control arm, probably, but I'll do it all after I get the spring out. So now I'm going to go after the shock. I'll get back to you as soon as the shock's off. Or when it's ready to come out, I'll show you pulling it out. Okay, I got her unhooked at the bottom, the shock. Let's see what comes up out of the top. There she is. Look at that. 
Ah, perfect. Those are fine thread. Uh, they definitely, uh, a lot of cranking on those. But anyway, there's one shock out. Then I'll go after the spring now. So I'll get my uh, spring compressing tool and get it in place. I'll take you along for the ride. I'm going to move a few of these things out of the way here. Straighten up a bit. I want a nice clear area to work when you're doing the springs. All right, you got her all set up. I had to fiddle with it quite a bit. I got the, I got this plate down as far as I can get it. The lower plate, the upper plate is up as high as I can get it. So uh, with luck, this will have enough travel to get it out. I can't, the rod, the threaded rod on it isn't any longer. So this is the best, the best I have. I got a little uh, three in one oil on it because that's all I had around and easily get a hold of for uh, lubrication. But even that's better than nothing. So I'm on the inside. You guys are on the outside. So you guys are going to have to keep your head down if she comes, comes flying at you. You might get hit. We'll see how she goes. So I'm just doing this manually because I don't uh, think this is a beefy enough rig to put the impact onto. Not like the one Nick on uh, Vintage Thunderbird Repair has to use, the Moog one, or the Moog, they're pretty good. Uh, I have to say, if you're going to swing it and you do a lot of these, it's worth investing in that for these jobs. Um, I don't think I'll be doing these too many times, but anyway, I have a Princess Auto one. It's, it's modeled after the Moog one, or Moog, I guess it's called, but it's not, it's not the quality. So I'm not going to impact it, I'm just going to hand crank it. So, it's a little slower, but uh, hey, good for the arms, good workout. I'm definitely out of the way, nothing's going to hit me. It may make a lot of noise and scare me, but um, it might scare you guys too, I don't know. Have a quick peek. Yeah, she's coming. If I can get her to pop up out of there. That's all I'm after. She's loosening up. I can feel it looser there now. She's starting to twist. You guys can probably see that. There she comes. Springs are nothing to be fooling around with. You don't want to take your, you want to be out of the way of these things. Yeah. All right, I'd say, it's probably all I'm gonna get out of that. Uh, should, that should come out. All right, there's that. So there's just an extension that they use on this. It's not heavy, it's just a tin. I really wouldn't want to put a uh, impact on that too many times. You might not have much left. So hand do it. So everything looks pretty good there. I think I can handle it by hand now. I think that spring actually broken. To be honest with you. But let's see. Yep. That spring is broken. I'll see, it might be just the, the way it sits. So it looks like there's a piece here. Yeah, there it is. That, that spring is broke. So that's going to be a new set of springs. Yeah, it broke for a long time. All right, let's get this out of here. on the other side so I can get a hold of it without it bouncing on the floor. <coughs> there she comes. There's one spring. Spring off. Now we're down to uh, taking all this stuff off. So I'll break this uh, upper ball joint. I probably might get a bell get a bell off in one piece, but it has to come apart anyway. And this is a good bet, as good advice as any as this. So let me get set up and uh, start pulling off some of the the control the ball joints, upper and lower ball joint.
break them free from the from the rest of it. And then we have that stabilizer link that has to be broke off too. All right, let me get at her. Okay, so I started taking this stabilizer link off. The bottom one snapped off right away so that it's pretty thin. So these need to be replaced anyway. They were beyond, even though they look looks pretty decent. But where the uh, it joins to the metal is rusted, pretty thin. So I'm going to pull the stabilizer link off and drop that out of the way. And I don't have to fiddle with this. I could always just take a zip cut and cut it off because it's ruined anyway. Which I could. I'll do that when I get it off the car. All right, I'll put you on time lapse and uh, on the old lapse of Roo, and uh, you'll be able to enjoy all this. Okay, I got that off, and uh, you see what I did there with the cotter pins? I was I plowed through them. I was pretty confident I wouldn't have any issues with doing that on this car, because I mean they might have come out. The problem with doing it that way is just getting the brute force on them. If this starts to spin in here, this tapered, if that starts to spin, you're going to have one heck of a time on your hands getting that to stop spinning, and then you've already destroyed your opportunity there so I, I took her I took a risk and did it it's not the right way to do it you, you could spend more time getting those pins out but uh, these have been in there for so long I, I felt pretty confident but it's still I just want you to know that's not the proper way of doing it for that reason alone all right so now I'm gonna pull this these off I don't know what's entailed up front there what size of bolts or anything so let me get some uh, Actually, I could pull that upper control arm off right now. Let me do that since it's just sitting. Oh, it's seized. <laughs> All right, let me get that off. And then I'll work my way down. I may have to uh, hold it from the inside, but I'm going to try it with the impact. I'm getting lazy. Let's see what happens with the impact. That, that's a three-quarter bolt. And actually, or three-quarter nut. And actually, a 19 will fit on it pretty much the same. So let's try it. Spun right off. Alright, save that. Make sure I know where it goes. Spin this one off. Hopefully it's just, just as easy. Yep. Good. I'm getting a pile of tools around here. So, somebody... <laughs> let me have to bring you in here. Someone had been doing some fancy uh, wheel alignment on this car. Look, they got all the spacers on the outside. Not really sure how that aligns the car. Anyway, that's what we have. And then there's a washer on the other side. I'll save that one. And I'll set you back down. You can get that control arm pulled off there. And just like, just like that, off she comes. Dump the dirt out of it. Get the nuts back in the places just for reference. Put the castle nut back on the upper joint. And I'm going to, I won't put those back on those bolts. I'm going to save these aside, the uh, control arm bolts, the nuts. I'm going to save them with the control arm. I'm trying to keep all the nuts and bolts that came together. And I'll, I'll tag them. I'll bag them and tag them. And there's the spindle. She's off. And that's it. This can come off now. It could have come off before, I suppose. But, all right. There you are. All right, let's get rid of that. The line, uh, someone rounded off. They rounded off the the brake line nut going into this. So, I mean, this line's done. Like clearly, it's going to have to be replaced. But I just wanted out of the way for now. take that off inside there one brake line out I wanted to save the uh, the original bends so 
that line actually is in pretty good shape, but they did strip that uh, that line nut. So I'll probably end up making a new line. Why not? Get it all fresh and new. Anyway, so I'm saving the pre uh, preserving the uh, original bends as best I can. That's why it's all one piece. I went ahead and I took the nut off of this arm that runs down while it's still hooked to that lower control arm, so it gives a good uh, support. Well, that was a brutal one to get off. Anyway, a little bit of heat, a little bit of liquidity. It was okay, and now I'm going after uh, the bolt. I gotta take. Actually, I should take that out first. That small one. That looks like a nine sixteenth. Anyway, though that one there was. Uh, well, I end up using a thirty millimeter socket on it. This this uh, castle nut. I think it's an inch and a quarter. I'm not sure. I didn't have one that would go over it deep enough to go over. And uh, I couldn't do it with a wrench. It just wouldn't budge. So I had to put a breaker bar on, heat it, lots of uh, deep creep. So I want to see if this will snap off there. So let's try it quickly. Well, I got it all set up. It's not on all the way because I don't have sockets deep enough. So that's not going to work. I'm going to have to come up with a better plan than that. Okay, I got to put a little heat on this nut. I started getting it off, but uh, I had to heat it. Um, it. It's on pretty tight, and now I'm at a point where my little uh, heater isn't seen to be doing it. Well, without a lot of extra work and gas wasted, so I'm going to try my, my spot welder and see if I can get up on that nut with the spot welder. And make it make it work so just hang in there and hopefully this puts a little heat into that thing this is heavy to hang on with one hand and get up on there it's a tight spot but let's see what happens worst case is it doesn't work all right let's try it something will get hot I'll give the spot welder a little break. Starting to, starting to glow there now. All right, do it in steps. We don't want to hurt anything. Ah, that's right, rosy in and up pretty good. All right, give her that little break. A little bit more, and then we'll see what we can do with it. All right. Well, that looks pretty hot. Let's get that out of the way. I get the ratchet here. There she goes. That's a lot better. Man, I was struggling with that one. Whoop, hit the... It's all right, guys. Hopefully you're still in the line of sight there. All right. Oh yeah, that's the way to do it. It's heavy, but it's quick. There, now well, that's super hot, so I'm just gonna let it hang there for a second. Um, I did jack up the, you can see the jack right there. I put the jack under the control arm to, to rise it up. Oh yeah, before I forget, <clears throat> in the lower control arm, that 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 uh, nut I took off it had a stud that came through, and that's the whole. That's called the shim holder, and these are the shims between the frame and the uh, control arm up underneath on the lower. These are in pretty bad shape. I, I'm pretty sure you can buy these new, so I'll probably try to figure out. I guess you get a bunch of them because this car is probably going to need to be reshimmed differently. Anyway, I just didn't want to forget to mention those shims. Okay. Now that we have the uh, inner, inner nut off on that uh, lower control arm, uh, on the pivot bracket, that's, just, that's what holds in there, it's a pivot bracket that holds that on. And when I get that, I'll show you what the pivot bracket is. So, in order to get this lower control arm out, I had to loosen these off, and I just used the impact. And they are 15 sixteenths, they came off easy, probably could have done it with a breaker bar. But I'm getting a little lazy. Anyway, so 
that's done. And there's a pleat. And these are fine thread. So if you are doing it by hand, expect it. Expect to crank on it lots. All right, in case I had it out of camera. So what we got here. The two nuts, two lock washers, uh, lower plate that goes, this is the control arm will go in here. This goes on top of the control arm. And then there's the upper plate and then two large square nuts. And, they, and it, again, it came off pretty easy. Um, there's no way rust wasn't building up too much in there. Anyway, and then again on here, in case I did miss it on camera, there's the backer plate here, uh, rear bushing. I don't know if this all comes in one piece. I doubt it. And then there's a sleeve in there and a rubber. And this will all be this will all be replaced. And then of course the castle nut and the lock washer, which I think I have right here. So I should put it on. Castle nut and not lock washer, castle nut and cotter pin. So anyway, there it's all held together and it'll all be cleaned up and done when I'm ready to. So let's pull out the uh, lower control arm like that. So this is the pivot bracket and this is the control arm. This is the pivot bolt. And of course, I think there is another, there might be another bush, uh, another pleat in there. And they'll leave it on. Actually, that might be that might be spot welded right to the control arm. So, and then of course the lower ball joint. They have grease fitting in there, do they? Huh, the grease fitting is funny. Grease fitting on this one is off to the side. I didn't know that. Probably if I watched John's, he probably did cover that. I did watch John's, I didn't notice it, but anyway. Maybe 66 they changed it. I don't know. 65, there seems to be a grease fitting off to the side of these cups. All right, lower control arm, set it aside. And now, let's do the, uh, the drag link assembly. So I can take it off. I want to keep the drag link assembly all together. So let's go to the left side and we'll get that unhooked from the control arms. All right, here we are. Uh, I'm on the driver's side and uh i was able to get this this is the pitman arm here and this is where the pitman arm this is the connector to the drag link and of course this is the outer uh tie rod end i can't get the cotter pin out of the tie rod end so i'm going to plow through it and i didn't mention what it, <laughs> if these are no good and you and it starts spinning on you because you did this just take a zip cut and cut it off like really if it's no good it's no good um, and you can do that if you're having trouble all the way through just cut it off and pound it down But I always try to try to get them off first because you don't always know the condition of them But that one there I'm pretty sure it's gone But sometimes you want to salvage those things so you don't want to be doing that stuff That's when you have to spend a little more time and getting the cotter pins out But anyhow, let's see if we can get this uh, This pin out here There she comes So I'm just using a pair of side cutters and just uh, using the nut for a backing stop and just grip it and just drag it out, just like that. It's a tight spot. It's easier just to do it this way. There's a lot of ways you can do that. No big deal. So we'll get that one off. Oh, and you notice I've moved it all this way because uh, it gives you access to this uh, Pitman arm nut. But when you do that, remember when I blocked those, uh, plugged those, steering box hose ports you might want to put a, a bucket under this and a rag over top of it because uh, and take those plugs out because when you move this you're going to have fluid forced out through those ports and same for going the other side and uh it'll spray all over the place and ask me how how i know that or how i remembered to mention that there we it's much easier when you, <laughs> you take the cotter pin out.
I'm going to pull off uh, that drag link support. I'm just going to clean up this area a bit. It's got a lot of, there's a lot of uh, undercoating on this. But if I can get a, a socket on them. All right, let's see what we can do with that, the way it is. All right, I think those are 9 sixteenths. Okay, after a, a bit of searching to find a socket, I decided to go with my little air cat for these three. So I'm... Anyway, let's get them off. Yeah, turning. So I'm going to have to get a 9 sixteenths. And they are 9 sixteenths, just so you know, in case I didn't mention that. My arm won't reach around. They won't bend the right way for it. And I, I can't. All right, I might be able to do it. What is going on there now? Oh, it's on this end. It's coming. There's one. Drop him out. Let's see if I can get the other one. That undercoating is brutal. chip away at that undercoating because I can't get that socket on. So let me go. Man, that stuff is on there. I guess after this many years, it's bound to be a little bit tight and hard. Alright. This is almost painful to watch. <laughs> extension of course which is gonna take my impact power away all right let's do this a lot in there now oh my god there she goes all right I'll get the wrench on the other side she is okay there she is the uh, drag link and the uh, right side uh, support for the drag link she's out I'll keep it assembly I'll put the nuts and the, everything back and the bolts back together on that so I don't lose them and uh, that's pretty much it for this uh, for this video I'm gonna I'll grab that off from the other side when I do it you already saw me do that and then I'll pull off that uh, that steering box in the next video and of course that proportional valve I've been saying that now for a while but there's only so many minutes in a day and you can only do so much so uh, here's the spoils of war over there you got the backer plate the rotor and hub assembly caliper uh, lower control arm upper control arm or upper control arm rather there spindle strut and of course that which is the drag link assembly and i got the brake line off all right guys that's great really appreciate you uh stopping by i'll just give you a big view of her up on the stands here which i think she looks pretty good i think uh i'm gonna be able to do a lot of the rust repair right on those blocks at least till i get the body stabilized Yeah, well, I junk piled on it already. Man, any flat spot you can put junk on. And we'll see you in the next one.